Hello everyone, this is Gagan Singh, your biology teacher and welcome to Science Express. Today we are going to discuss in this video about reproduction in animals. How do plants and animals reproduce? As it is found in chapter number 1 of class 12th biology, reproduction in organisms and it basically defines as the process that results in the formation of new individuals of the same kind. And for a common example, you can open your fridge, take out the fruit, eat that fruit, put the seed in soil, you'll get a plant. And that plant will attain maturity and reach to an extent to become a tree and reproduce a fruit and a seed. That whole cycle is the process of reproduction. And in reproduction, though it usually comes with a slight changes and variation in structural and genetics of new individuals and where we can correlate that an offspring is produced from parents. And to understand better, we need to know that there are two types of reproduction. And each organism has its own way and own mechanism to multiply and produce offsprings. The organism habitat, its internal physiology, and several other factors that correlate in producing a new individual. And the two types are asexual number one and sexual reproduction in asexual reproduction it does not involve the formation or union of male or a female gametes but in sexual reproduction we see that a new individual can only be produced by the formation of gametes in both female and a male example sperm and ovum and later on they fertilize to form a zygote which develops into a new individual. The latter leads to the creation of new combination of genes by pulling together the genes, the genes that derived from the parents. And in asexual reproduction a single organism is capable of reproducing its own kind and individuals produce are genetically identical. It is mostly characteristic feature of lower organisms such as protozoans, sponges, covalent traits and certain platforms. It may take place by many different methods and it does not require a certain fusion of male and female gametes. Asexual reproduction can happen through fission where an individual splits into two or more new individuals. Like a cell, it divides into two. Budding, it is commonly seen in hydra where we see that a one single hydra can produce so many new individuals by budding. A small bud will appear on it and that single bud will produce a new individual. Thirdly, we see fragmentation. In fragmentation, what happens is a single individual gets split into many new individuals. It is also commonly seen in planaria and hydra as well. And fourth, spores. It is the formation or regeneration of new indi individuals where a parent produces spores and those spores get distributed and forms new individuals. Then gamule formation. In water, we see that sponges often 
produce gameo. It is a cluster of cells which then splits to form new and many individuals of the same kind and regeneration. Regeneration is a process by an individual or an organism can reproduce either a lost organ or a part or it can also be seen in flatworms where if you cut a flatworm into two the head will produce tail and the tail or the back part will produce the front the head so it is again a type of regeneration that we see and uh, all these methods come into reproduction and same way if we look at plants and we take an example of plants we can take a part of a plant and we can produce a new tree or a new plant from a stem and that comes in the next topic which is vegetative propagation vegetative propagation is the regeneration of new plants from the vegetative part which is called vegetative propagation second is natural vegetative propagation in natural vegetative propagation a portion is detached from the body of the plant and that portion of the mother plant grows into a new independent plant under suitable conditions and we can do that by splitting or cutting or taking a specimen from the mother plant like leaves stems roots of flowering plants and we can put them in those natural conditions that can reproduce a new individual number three your next topic in the book it talks about artificial vegetative propagation and this is the most commonly used propagation method in today's life and also is very much beneficial in these days because the food that we get in these days comes from this portion of the study of your book and in this what happens is a portion is separated from the mother plant and is grown independently such as cutting layering grafting are common practices and grafting is a technique that children often find it uh, interesting when they see a gardener cutting off a stem of a plant and then growing it into a new plant itself and by all these methods we get clones because this is not a sexual reproduction so that is why the individuals the new individuals that we get are hundred percent true copies of their parents and that is why it is a very good technique in deciding determining and getting a disease free good quality food or any vegetable that comes in the market because all those things are the exact copies of the parent plant and this is a common practice nowadays uh, in the world of vegetables that people do business and they grow with the help of these techniques that we learn in biology now let us look at some advantages of vegetative propagation. It is a rapid, easier and less, less expensive method of multiplying plants which have a poor seed viability or prolonged dormancy which means the certain plants cannot grow individually without given any artificial conditions. For example, if you want to plant a coffee plant it would take many years before that seed sprouts into a new plant so these vegetative propagation methods these artificial vegetative 
propagation methods actually help us to decrease the time frame and to decrease the expense and also it is the best way to multiply plants in a very short period of time and we get of course a plant that reproduces faster easier and better yield and certain seeds don't have the viability to grow because they cannot resist certain diseases or they just decay over a period of time and that is why it is a best technique that people use these days and these plants are the exact genetic copies of the parent and they are called as clones we also need to look at the disadvantages because we know there are multiple advantages but what about the disadvantages of these systems the first disadvantage that we see in this is that the plant material when we take them out and try and uh, put in they decay and are prone to diseases because if we do not take good care while propagating or cutting they might get infected and easily they are prone to diseases and decaying that is why it is most important to take a good aseptic disease free techniques in order to propagate these and there are no variations in these plants dispersal therefore it causes overcrowding the three disadvantage is it decays it causes it can get diseases and also there are no variations because this is the exact copies of the parent itself so as this far we have understood that how asexual reproduction works it does not require a special or it does not require the opposite sex of the same plant we can just take a plant material or a vegetative part from a flowering plant and we can put that into a suitable condition and that small cutting can grow into a new individual plant now for the next topic let us go to sexual reproduction by sexual reproduction we can understand that it takes not just one one but two opposite sexes which fuses together to form a new individual in simpler terms it means that a male gamete and a female gamete fuses to form a zygote and that zygote goes on into formation of a multicellular embryo and later that embryo with time develops into a new fully grown individual and all of this happens through the process called as sexual reproduction and in this type of reproduction we get variations because it happens through natural selection of genes because it is not the reproduction that happens through just one but two where two individuals all the genes form together and through natural selection they give rise to a new individual that is not identical to the parent it will always show variations and this will also be different from the siblings because if you even take the example of yourself we come from our parents our mother and a father gives rise to two or three siblings brother sisters but all those brother sisters and the mother father would be different from each other and this happens through natural selection of genes and that is why we get higher breeds and better breeds or better species of progeny in in sexual reproduction and this happens through a process called sexual fertilization first a juvenile phase 
comes, then the morphological and physiological changes occur prior to activate reproductive behavior. A juvenile phase is just like a vegetative phase where only the gametes will be produ produced and an individual will grow and attain maturity and also will grow into morphological and behavioral patterns that will define its sex and then that individual can attain the power to give rise to a new individual or you can say it will be capable to reproduce on its own the male or a female gamete and later on that can fuse to form a zygote and a new individual will be formed. Next we need to know that what are the events that goes into this and those events determine this sexual reproduction. Number one is pre-fertilization event. Secondly, it is fertilization. Third, post-fertilization events. So, sexual reproduction happens in three different stages. Number one is where male or a female gamete is formed. Number two, those male and a female gamete will form and fuse together. Number three, after that fusion, that zygote will grow into a new individual. So number one, pre-fertilization fertilization event. In this, gametogenesis or gamete transfer appears. And these are the two main events of pre-fertilization. In this, gametogenesis is the process by which gametes are produced in an individual and then those gametes are transferred either by a medium or by different methods that animals and plants behave in certain ways to transfer those gametes. Number two, fertilization. Fertilization is the fusion of male and a female gamete which results in the formation of a zygote. After pre-fertilization, in this process, a zygote is formed and the fusion of male and female gamete coming together is known as syngamy. And this results in the formation of diploid zygote. And there are two types of fertilization. One is external which takes place outside of the body of an individual or organism and the other is internal. It takes place inside the body of an organism. And lastly, which is thirdly, is the post-fertilization events. And these events comes after when fertilization has taken place. In this process of development of embryo from the zygote is called embryogenesis or the manufacturing of the embryo then the development of that embryo grows into a newly formed fully grown individual. In flowering plants ovary develops into fruit and ovules mature into seeds. In animals, the zygote starts developing soon after its formation. And in animals, there are two types of post-fertilization events. Number one, they can be uh, termed as viviparous or oviparous. In oviparous, they lay egg, but in viviparous, they lag, they lay or they give rise to a living young ones, a living individual. So now we will talk about the sexuality in plants. Number one, plants can be bisexual or unisexual. And they also can be termed according to their sexuality 
can be termed as staminate which are capable of fertilizing female organs or pistillate which is known as ovule bearing organ of a seed plant. They can also be termed as dioecious or monoecious. Dioecious is the organism which have male and female organs in separate plants like a male sexual organ in a different plant of the same species and a female sexual organ in the same species of the plant but different from both the individuals like male and a female but different different plants but in monoecious male and female organ are present in the same plant the next topic is parthenogenesis parthenogenesis is the formation of an individual without fertilization and this peculiar mode of sexual reproduction in which development of egg occurs without the participation of sperm cell which is termed as parthenogenesis is uh, very unique and can only be seen in insects, crustaceans, rotifers and some platyhelminthes and in this we can take so many examples that without even fertilization a fruit develops and this process is known as parthenogenesis and we can discuss and learn about this with various examples if we look into books and we study about them lastly for today's lesson the last topic is ostrus and menstrual cycle in female in the majority of non primate like cows sheep rat dogs etc the female receive the male only at certain periods of year this is called breeding season for that animal sexual activities of female occur cyclically that is outside these cycles the females do not have any sexual activity and such a cycle is called an ostrous cycle where it has been seen in these non primates they only undergo uh, sexual or that breeding season once or twice a year it does not happen like primate which is menstrual cycle and menstrual cycle is the quality that females exhibit is cyclic changes in the activities of ovaries and accessory ducts such as changes in the reproductive phase in them is called menstrual cycle and it happens in primates monkeys apes and human beings i hope that this lesson would have been a very great help for you and if there is any question you can email me on my email address and also comment in the section below and I hope you like the video and we would discuss more questions you can leave the questions in the video and later on I can discuss the same questions in the upcoming videos thank you for watching this is your teacher Gagan Singh have a nice day